Hello, and welcome to our show, For the Love of Animals. We're so glad you joined us today. I'm Darlene Pickford. And I'm Greg Bauer. And I uh, want to tell our viewers about a couple of upcoming shows okay. that we have. Uh, one on cancer in uh, pets. Ooh, okay. And I think we'll find very interesting on that yes. one. And also, monarch butterflies and the environment. Right, part one and part two. That's right, so right. those are a couple of things that uh, to look forward to. But what do we have on tap for today, Darlene? Well, we're gonna talk about the uh, care and uh, of your pet today. We're gonna talk about allergies in pets. Okay. Not allergies in humans, but allergies in our pets. Well, but there's also a lot of uh, correlation between oh, I, allergies well, between them and also. We'll ask the ask expert. Okay? <laughs> exactly. Would you introduce our guest? Uh, yes, I'll be happy to. It's Dr. Rennie Church, who's been with us before, and she's a Paducah veterinarian and very, very knowledgeable on on this topic and a later show of one, one on cancer too. So, Rennie, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thanks We're looking me. forward to it. Thanks. Thank you for coming. She's also noted to be a very, very good surgeon too. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, Rennie, tell us about your fur family right now. I have um, kind of an aged fur family right now. Uh, my dog just turned 14. Uh -huh. I've had her since she was a baby. We have, um, we did have five cats, just lost a couple um, in the last few months, two of my older ones. So now we have three, three cats and a dog. So <laughs> okay. two kids, two fish. So. <laughs> well, so you have plenty at home, yes, right? Yes, plenty. Okay. Well. Let's get started. Tell us and educate us. What is an allergy in a dog or a cat? Um, just like with us, it, you um, are allergic to usually something in, the, in your immediate environment. It can be inhalants, it can be food, it can be to like a cleaner, just like us, and they manifest much in the same way we do, so. Okay, and uh, is, it, is it very much related to, to humans, or do they have any kinds that humans don't have, or? I think um, normally the peak allergy season, spring, fall, right. uh, summer for dogs is I think probably peak allergy season for people as well. Um, some dogs do suffer with allergies year round. Um, it just really depends on what their specific allergies are. But dogs can have, for example, if we send off um, for an allergy panel to find out what they're allergic to, I've had dogs come back with 40 different allergens just in the environment that they're allergic to, trees, what? grass. Um, uh, dust mites. I've had one dog that was allergic to cat hair, so oh. <laughs> they can be allergic to, to a plethora of things, just like people. So, uh -huh. and uh, what different types of allergies are there? Are these your simple class for us, you know, non-medical people? It's usually inhalant allergies for us. That would be the snotting and the snorting from the ragweed. Um, dogs typically sit and chew on their feet with inhalant allergies. Um, the other main class of allergies that we see are food allergies. Um, the, the big one right now that it's, you can see it in the food industry for, for dogs is wheat, corn, and soy. You see grain-free foods everywhere, limited ingredient foods, mm. because the industry is really starting to, to take notice of, of food allergies as well. And then you can have those dogs that are a combination. You just have just a poro allergy dog or that's, it has an inhalant allergies and also food allergies. And those are tough because it's hard to narrow it down. So, so. so we have a lot of dogs that are allergic to grains? They can be allergic we, to grains, wheat, corn, and soy. Now they can also have major protein allergies too. A dog can be allergic to chicken or to turkey, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. When, how about cats and their um, food? Cats, yes, cats can have food allergies too. The thing that I, that I was taught that I see the most and the first thing that we pull if we've got a cat who, who looks like an allergy cat, usually there's bumps in front of the ears and they're itchy all over. Um, we'll pull red food coloring and we'll, we'll yes. pull, uh, we'll pull um, seafood, which seems odd for a cat, yeah. but seafood is one of the highest um, protein allergens in wow. cats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember a cat at one time in the shelters was a, a lo uh, allergic to the dye, mm -hmm. you know, the, the red coloring, food coloring. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, the food coloring. Yes, so, you, so we just recommend like an all brown food, a limited yes. ingredient, like a chicken and rice or, yeah. Okay, so. all right. Would you go over what broad uh, list of symptoms might we have for, I, I, I have a problem with my dog or cat at home. Go over kind of a list of symptoms again for us. Okay, in a dog um, with inhalant allergies, typically they'll sit and chew on their feet. They just go to town on their feet, the underside of their feet, they'll lick and chew. Um, that, that usually when you see the chewing on the feet, you gotta start with inhalant allergies. Only a third of all dogs are antihistamine responsive, so it makes it a little tough. 
Um, you know, people can take a Benadryl and you know, feel a little bit better. Zyrtec, you know, things like that. There are some antihistamines that work better than others for dogs, but um, it's it's limited, unfortunately, in their treatment. Um, other other things we see in dogs are um, ears, a lot of itchy ears, chronic ears, chronic drainage, chronic yeast in the ears, and that can be either that can be inhalant or food allergy. If it's one ear, we tend to think more towards food. Can't really tell you why. <laughs> That's just what I was taught <laughs> and what I know. Out. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then food allergies are usually truncal. They're along the trunk, they get thin hair, they just itch seemingly for no reason. People a lot of times think they maybe have fleas. We don't find any evidence of fleas, but they're just itchy all over. Uh -huh. So, um, and that, that can be food or inhalant too, but, but usually if we have especially a young dog that's maybe not really gone through seasons where they've developed inhalant allergies yet, but they're itchy all over, you really gotta look at food. So, and in cats, cats get what's called a miliary dermatitis, it's little pinpoint bumps up and down their back. Usually that's environmental allergies. It's either fleas or um, just something swirling around that they're allergic to. Um, if, they're, if it's a food allergy, usually in cats, you're gonna see those bumps just located in front of the ears. So, that's strange. Yeah, it is strange. <laughs> but that's usually what we see, so. Okay. Okay, so if I see any of the, kind of these symptoms and that, for, how, how long should I wait before I come to a vet? Well, you don't want to wait till they're, you know, they, their paws can get really raw and it's not exactly. like they can wear shoes and socks to protect them. So if they're really going at their feet, they probably need to be checked sooner than later. Mm -hmm. So, and then a cat too, that miliary dermatitis can show up and in 24 hours just be diffuse. So, you know, if, if you've got to think if you were just sitting there itching all the time, you'd want to get oh, to the doctor yes. sooner yes. than later. Very so. uncomfortable. Yes. Now, can these allergies ever become really life-threatening, that serious? They can. Um, one breed in particular, uh, Westies, West Highland Terriers, they can be, um, as, as a family, they have a problem with uh, epidermal cracks, cracks in their epidermis. So they don't have- Now, epidermis being- skin. The skin. The skin. The okay. skin. Okay. So they have cracks in their barrier, you know, their, their, barrier, their protective barrier. Okay. And yeast will set in, and Westies are really prone to allergies anyway. Not all Westies, but right. that's just the but breed some. where you see that specific problem. Um, and it, it can actually, they can actually end up kind of like a burn because they don't Ooh. have they don't have that that full barrier of your skin and so uh -huh. yeast will set in and they itch and scratch and their skin tears easily so in that case yes it can be life-threatening because it acts almost like a third degree burn more surface area Ooh. sets them up for infection you know burns are become infected easier than say a cut or a wound right. because of the surface area right. it's the same thing in that particular case so we really should observe our pets very carefully. It can be miserable. Allergies can be, just, I mean, if you have yes. allergies, it can be miserable. Dogs don't tend to snot and snort like people do, but it's just as miserable in their manifestations, so. And uh, I guess pretty much the allergy season follows much the same pattern as it does for humans then? It can, but year-round allergies can occur in some dogs too. Okay. So yeah, it just depends on what they're allergic to, so. You, you mentioned fleas. Other than just seeing the fleas, uh -huh. what, how would I recognize that my cat has a flea allergy or a, or a dog uh, has a uh, flea allergy? Flea allergy. Flea allergy pattern typically is from the center of the back down along the rump and down the back legs. They'll get okay. really thin and they tend to, fleas like to congregate right at the tail head. So okay. if you see, you know, your dog turn around and really, da -da 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 -da, you know, at the tip of their, at the head of the tail, then you want to start looking for fleas because that's like I said, that's where they like to congregate and that's where they get the itchiest is all in that just area right there. So, okay. Are, are fleas the, probably the most common allergy or uh, are, are there other allergies that are more common than say the fleas? Because we always have fleas. Uh, right. If yeah. they go outside at all particularly. Not all dogs and cats are allergic to fleas. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, it, sometimes it's just, more annoying. They're just chasing them, you know, instead right. of, and they won't lose all that hair, or get the red bumps, or you know, the the hair won't get thin. Um, so not all dogs and cats are allergic to fleas, like mm -hmm. you said. But um, the ones that are, it can be very significant. There's enough antigen in the bite of one female flea, if you're allergic, to set you off. Like someone who has a peanut peanut butter allergy and they right. eat one peanut. You know, it just takes one peanut to set them mm -hmm. off. It would take just one flea to set them off if they're allergic. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, again, we have to really observe our pets. And, uh, yes, ma'am. If you're like me, I don't want fleas around. So, <laughs> <laughs> when it, Let's talk about indoor versus outdoor. I assume, it, would outdoor animals have more, uh, more prone to allergies than indoor? 
Again, it depends on what you're allergic to. Okay. You know, if That's you're allergic true. to dust mites and you're an inside dog or cat, you're going to have more problem indoors. If you're allergic to grass and trees and you're an outside pet, okay. you're going to have more problem outdoors. So it just depends on what your allergies are. And you mentioned environmental. Mm -hmm. uh, don't we have to be careful about the cleaners we use and the commercial products that we might spray mm -hmm. in the house? Sure, that can set them off just like it can us, especially if there's a heavy scent or some of the fabric fresheners that yes. you spray or the carpet cleaners. You know, the dogs are right there on it, the cats are right there on it. And it, I've seen um, contact dermatitis from that where it you know, prickles the underside where they lay on it. Yeah. So yes, that's a very real concern. Now, how about baking soda on your carpets? Have you ever, do we have cases where they've been allergic to baking soda? Not to my knowledge. That's pretty benign. They use baking okay. soda in a lot of cat litters, too, because it's pretty, you know, it'll absorb the smell, right. and it's pretty benign. No, no problems. So. Well, just regular baking soda is mm -hmm. good to sprinkle on your carpets and vacuum. Yes, ma'am. So, I mean, so that's mm -hmm. much better, you know, household-wise. It, then, also, it also then, keep, keeps your carpet clean too. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's very inexpensive, and yes. it's 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 good. So, I also have to remember that cats are are very sensitive to smell, and isn't their skin very sensitive also? Sure, especially if you have one that's set up for allergies. Ooh. So, yeah, definitely. Ooh. So, in other words, <laughs> keep keep everything as dust free and and <laughs> and as green green clean as you as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, just, it's the same thing we do for humans. Well, you yeah. Know, all, all of these um, ideas and precautions and so on apply to humans too. And if you're mm -hmm. doing it for humans, chances are you're doing it for right. your pets too. Okay, so uh, an animal comes in to you. How do you diagnose a, a particular al allergy? What, what do you do? And tell me about the test and educate me so I recognize the names that you might Okay, use. so an animal comes in and they're itchy. Right. Um, the first thing we do is we talk, you know, have you seen fleas? You know, is it is this seasonal? Is it um, year round? Have you changed foods recently? You look at what's happening with the animal and try to determine is this inhalant food or combination? Um, and then from there, um, if, you, if you have, say you've gone through your treatment and you're not making a lot of progress, uh -huh. you can do um, an allergy test. There's a blood test where you can you just draw blood and you send it off, and okay. they'll do um, a region-specific allergy test. Unfortunately, where we live, we're under the influence of north, south, and eastern mm. allergies. We're kind of a dumping ground. And we're talking <laughs> about Paducah, Kentucky. Yes, okay. Paducah is really is it. We really are where we live in the crosswinds. It, it really it, we do have a lot of of antigenic stimulation here, okay. allergy stimulation here for people and for dogs. Yes. So yeah. So when you send off for that test. Um, They'll, they'll send you results, and it's a list of, of common grasses, of trees that are in this area. It also lists um, dust mites. It lists um, even things like um, cockroach droppings, you know, fleas, anything that's environmental that could okay. be in this area. And um, you, get, you get a positive, you get strong positives, not quite so positive or negative for everyone that's listed. And I've, I've had dogs that have 40 things, you know, oh, 40 word. plus that they're allergic to. And, and a lot of times it's things that you can't get rid of, like right. you know the big oak tree in the back, or just grass, you know, a dog's gonna be in the grass. So then you just have to, you have to treat like the set of allergens that, that you've come up with that they're allergic to. And you can do that several different ways. You can use antihistamines, you can use steroids. There's a great new drug out that's based on a rheumatoid drug for people. So it is, um, it, it reduces uh, the inflammatory response that create allergies without immunosuppressing to the point where you um, can get sick with side effects, like with steroids. So it's, okay. it's a fantastic new drug. Um, there's that, and then um, you know, obviously if it's food, you just make the food change, and then you can mm -hmm. you know go from there. But um, so so there's antihistamines, there's steroids, there's this this new non-steroidal drug. Um, so an avoidance as much as you can, but it's it's. It's, a, it's always going to be one of those two groups, and you just got to figure out which one and then make the treatment work, so. Okay, okay. sounds like a cop. Well, <coughs> all that from the blood test. Well, there's the blood test, and there's also a skin test you can do. If you've ever gone to the allergy doctor, um, you, oh, yeah. they do the, the pricks where they load you up with um, different antigens. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Of course, the dogs sedate when it happens, and that's typically done at a dermatologist, a veterinary dermatologist's okay. office. That, that's oh, a referral. You. The, the blood draw we can, you know, draw in-house and send off to the lab. Um, so th those are the major tests. Everything else is just by exclusion. So. 
So, okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, that, I'll tell you, we're getting an awfully yeah, good start a on things. a lot of information here, <coughs> folks. Absolutely. <laughs> we want to stop for just a minute and take okay. a short break and listen to a happy tale about a cat named Finn. And she can tell us a little bit about Finn when we come back. Okay. Give a listen. This is a happy tale about Finn. Finn is a male cat that is about four years old. He was dropped off at the clinic as a kitten with a badly mangled leg. Some people found him under their deck and took him to the clinic where Rennie amputated his leg and then she took him home. Her kids named him Finn because they said he had a lucky Finn like Nemo. Finn likes to sleep on the shelves in the closet and if the family's too loud, he'll get down off the shelf and close the door. Problem is, once he does that, one of us has to open the door when he's ready to come out. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that little tale about Finn, and uh, uh, Rennie can tell you a little bit about more of that wonderful little cat, uh, uh, one of her, her pets. And we're talking today with Dr. Rennie Church about uh, pet allergies. Uh, she's a local Paducah veterinarian. And if you viewers would like more information about the topics that we're talking about today, we have three websites that would be a good start for you. First of all, the ASPCA, which is the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, has a lot of information there. And also and user friendly too. <laughs> yes. Also the Auburn University College of Veterinary Science and uh, Dr. Church is very familiar with that particular program. And also Purdue University has a website with the College of their Veterinary Science. And all three of those uh, websites uh, are real good sources for more information for you. So, but uh, l let's get back to allergies. <laughs> yeah, Doctor, where, where, what, where, when you're stuck with a problem with allergies, where do you go for more technical medical information? Uh, the information like the ASPCA is very user friendly for non-medical people. But just out of curiosity, where do you go to find additional uh, case histories or information in medical literature? Um, I just use, I have a, a derm book. It's great. It's got um, lots of wonderful pictures in it that I can show owners. And I can uh -huh. say, do you see this? This looks just like your dog. <laughs> and this is what we're dealing with. And it's, it's uh, pretty easily laid out where I can go through it with owners and talk to them, you know, you're seeing this, you're seeing this because of this, this is how it manifests and this is how we're going to treat it. So it's, it's just one of my old textbooks actually, but it's wonderful. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's wonderful. That's my main source. So, okay. yeah. It is in like, if I needed it to be a referred like to a dermatologist, mm -hmm. which would be a specialist in skin, yes, uh, I guess you just know through your associations, or uh, is there an association that that you go to to find out referrals or what? Dermatologists are actually fairly um, hard to find. Yes, it's not <laughs> one of the disciplines that that is just kind of you know saturated in the not every city would have one. right in the veterinary world so um, the closest I think that we can send to is Nashville and that's probably going to be more internal medicine and they're going to work with a dermatologist from there uh -huh. um, but there's there's um, a place in St. Louis and there's a place in Nashville where we refer if, if you know we're just not getting anywhere it's rare but um, you sometimes you have those cases like the Westies I was telling you about where you've just exhausted everything mm -hmm. there's not making any headway severe allergies so mm -hmm. yes I remember I had a friend who had uh, her cat had just had severe allergies mm -hmm. and they just they just uh, worked and worked and worked trying to find out what mm -hmm. was the source and the poor little animal still you know still suffered. So. Sure. So. D question, do you find more uh, allergies common to indoor pets or to outdoor pets or uh, it would seem to me that outdoor pets would be more susceptible to allergies than would indoor pets. Is that is that a fair statement? Or um, not? Maybe not susceptible but there's a lot more um, out there to be allergic to mm -hmm. you know if you're outdoors. Right. Um, I have one patient at, he lives next door to a farm and they rotate crops and when they're growing corn he is miserable during corn season because he's allergic to corn and even just growing 
in his environment. Mm. Wow. He's miserable. So, you know, the owner calls me, we're growing corn again. So, you know, <laughs> we have to tackle it to get ready for it. So, um, I would say outdoor dogs probably, um, you know, maybe more, uh, more to deal with. But even an indoor dog, they're going to have to go outside on walks. They go That's outside right. to the bathroom. You know, they ride around in cars with their owners. So they're going to be just as exposed, maybe not, you know, as, as frequently, but, but, you know, realistically, probably just as exposed. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. All right. You said uh, this dog had a corn, was allergic to corn. Mm -hmm. So it how wasn't just eating corn. It was the corn that's growing in his environment how did, as well. How did you diagnose that out of curiosity? Well, we, um, I knew that he was obviously a, a bad allergy dog and um, he was somewhat responsive to treatment for inhalant allergies. Okay. Um, and uh, he, I expected the response to be better than what it was. Okay. So then we think, is it food allergy? So we, we changed his food, took away the wheat, corn, and soy. Right. He got better. He did really well. Then they had the season where they grew the corn. And owner came in, he's like, we're back to square one. <laughs> so, you know, and, and so just in talking and talking and talking, I was like, so is there anything new in your environment? Anything they're growing? He's like, well, the neighbors, you know, the farm, they've, they're growing corn this year. And I was like, wait a minute. Could it be? I mean, I, that was just... Happens that we figured that guess, out. Right? It, it was a professional guess. That's a good way to but put you, it. But <laughs> you, you queried the owner about the entire environment for the yes, animal. Yes, you yeah. got to ask. Yes, because uh, what seems maybe obvious to me that they would know, you know, right? And, and what's obvious to them, I've got to get back to it. So yeah. Yeah, but that was that's good professional guess. Well, <laughs> and it worked good, out. Okay. But, so. from, but was from professional queries <laughs> trying to see, looking yes, at the total, total person total picture. and the total environment. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Now, getting back. Other than blood work, it, uh, are there any other tests that the oh, and the skin tests that might be run to uh, diagnose an you allergy? You could do a food trial if you have a dog come in and you've um, used. Uh, medications for inhalant allergies and, and things just aren't getting better and it's you know you're seeing maybe just the one ear you think maybe you've got that part under control whichever and now you're thinking about food the blood test and the um, the, the skin test are not great for food allergies they okay. are somewhat limited so a lot of times that's trial and error so okay. the first thing that I'll get rid of is say this is a dog that eats X brand of food and, and does A, B, and C treats. Okay. We'll knock out A, B, and C treats okay. and just look at the food. And typically two to four weeks on a food trial, but n they can't eat anything but that food. Like you can't, mm -hmm. can't be throwing them right. Oprah off the table you know, uh -huh. or something like that. So just that food and say they um, get better and everything's okay. great. Then we challenge with treat A that they're used to. And if everything's going well for two to four weeks, we challenge with treat B. And if they you. explode, we know that it's treat B, and then we can kind of look at the ingredients and say, okay, what's in B that's mm -hmm. not in X and A that's setting this dog off? So it takes, it's really, it's the owner's hard work on that. You know, oh, I can guide like them, it. but the owner's got to be very diligent in what's, what's crossing that dog's mouth to really figure out if it's a food allergy. So, because it's all about challenge, trial and error, and patience. Lots mm -hmm. of patients. Well, it certainly does sound mm -hmm. like on the part of the veterinarian and the pet owner. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Like, okay. and, and I would say, and what you say about dogs is also true for cats, isn't it? Yes, yes. Cats, um, I guess the, the things that cats are allergic to in food, you know, like I said, it's usually their red food coloring and the, the seafood products. That's, that, a, that's a large bulk of it. Some cats, it could be chicken. Some cats, it could be right. you know, the major proteins. But that's a large bulk of cat food allergies. So food allergies, it, you know, sometimes in cats, you know, I was talking about the bumps. That's a severe allergy. Some cats, it's just they've been eating this food for years. But then, you know, and talking to the owner, you know, she herps up about every, you know, two weeks. Mm -hmm. And it, it can be the food. It's just not so much an allergy as it is just an aversion. It just doesn't sit well. And so, you know. No different than us humans. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, returning to treatments, you know, what medicate? Would you go over again what medications you might use? Uh, sure. Um, one of the best antihistamines right now, at least coming from the dermatologist in the academic world, is Zyrtec. Um, the people really? are yes, people are often surprised at how much Zyrtec a dog requires. Though you know, we take one a day. 
dogs um, take anywhere from, a 40 pound dog is gonna have anywhere from one to four twice a day. Wow. Because the bioavailability is not there like it is for us. Um, Benadryl is really great for like stings, um, you know, uh, stung by a bee in the face is swelling, you know, acute allergies, but Benadryl over time, it loses its, its e efficacy for just day-to-day -day allergies. Okay. Um, so those, those are the antihistamines, you know, that probably people are familiar <laughs> with. Um, and then there's steroids. Steroids are not without side effects, so they work great, but there can be significant side effects. So you want to find the lowest dose at the longest interval that you can to treat an allergy and, and maybe supplement it with an antihistamine, do it together. Um, the new drug that I was telling you about that's based on the rheumatoid medication of people is called Apoquil. It's Apoquil. not easy to get. When, they, when Zoetis first manufactured the drug, they based um, the uh, amount to make on dermatologists' load of patients, and dermatologists actually see fewer patients in a day than we do, you know, I'll I see, gotcha. you know, many in, in a right. day or in a week. A, a dermatologist, by the time they do all their tests, are maybe seeing four patients, you know, in a three-day work week. So they didn't make enough. They didn't plan on making enough. And then two weeks after they introduced it in the United States, they released it um, in Europe. Oh. And so, and, and it's a drug that has to be synthesized and then manufactured. So they got way behind. So it got kind of hard to get. But they have, they've, um, I think they've, made some headway in fixing those problems and it's becoming more readily available. Um, but it, it's fantastic. Like I said, it's called Apoquel. Uh, and would you spell that for us? A-P-O-Q-U-E-L, Apoquel. Apo okay. Yes. And uh, um, it, um, like I said, it, it doesn't have the side effects of steroids. It, it suppresses JAKs 1 and 3, which are models for inflammation and allergies. But it leaves 2 alone, which you need for general immune health, okay. whereas steroids just wipes out all three. Okay. And you don't get the side effects either that you do mm -hmm. with steroids. So that's yeah. another great one. Wow. And then, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. No, no, I'm just, oh. just saying, wow. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm just oh. amazed at the amount of yeah. information. So in summary, what do you want our viewers to remember about allergens, allergies? Dogs and cats are as susceptible to allergies as we are. That's and right. allergies can be miserable. So do something if, about it. Yeah, if, you're, if your dire cat has a problem with allergies, you know, simple vet visit, and usually, usually it's, it's a simple treatment, you know, that just that's finding the right treatment that's for your pet. That's good to hear. Yeah. That's good. Well, Rennie, we would like to thank you so much yes, for thank visiting you. with us today. You have given our viewers so and us so much information <laughs> about A great it. overview about allergies, and uh, we want to thank you for spending thank time you. with us today. And Thanks. so, Darlene, unfortunately, we have to wind this I up. Know. We could go on for hours, I'm sure. <laughs> so in closing. I'm Darlene. I'm Greg. And we want to have our viewers remember what we tell you every time. Give your pet a little extra love today and, and every, every day. day. See you next time. Bye.